It's been called a crisis by the United Nations, who says despite being one of the most developed nations in the world, Canada has many Indigenous communities who live in poverty similar to a nation much lower on the human development scale. We've partnered to make a difference all over the world. Today, we focus on the crisis right here at home. We're going to look at three areas of impact. The high rate of suicide in the north, food costs and nutrition, and empowering communities to meet physical and spiritual needs. You and I have seen it in the headlines. We've talked about it on this program. The high rate of suicide, particularly among Indigenous children, even as young as 10 years old, is shocking. Nunavut has the highest rate in Canada, and experts say suicide among Inuit men is 40 times higher than youth in Canada's south. On top of that, many communities are facing serious health challenges as the cost for nutritious food continues to climb higher and higher. But we can ignite hope. And today we want to share with you some of the resilient stories of those living in remote communities. Stories of those who have suffered physical abuse, depression, and attempted suicide, but yet rise to bring hope to their people. Our goal today is to raise $75,000 to help with the community kitchen, distribution hub for much needed supplies, and suicide prevention. We need your help to meet this goal. It's a great goal, and we can make a difference right here at home. Let's get those phones ringing. Will you join us? We're going to tell you all about it, but if you want to join us right now and make that call, that number is 1-800-265-3100. You can also go to crossroads.ca slash north. Well, recently our team traveled to Birch Narrows, Saskatchewan, a small First Nations Dene community located seven hours north of Saskatoon. Our associate producer for First People's Voices, Crystal Lavallee, visited with Rebecca Sylvester to gain an understanding of the challenges that come with living in a remote community and also to hear about Rebecca's dream to help her people. Let's take a look. Family spending time together over a meal is an important part of the Dene community. Rebecca Sylvester and her family are fortunate enough to be able to afford a balanced diet of fresh meat, fruits and vegetables. But for many less fortunate families, their food options are limited. A lot of mothers have gestational diabetes because they're eating junk. If you buy a thing of strawberries at the store, it's going to cost you $8. You can buy probably three bags of chips for the same amount. Some of them get just a little cheap little meal. and. A lot of these kids come from poor homes. Our store has a lot of junk. It doesn't have what they need for their health. A six-hour drive north of Saskatoon, the small town of Birch Narrow, Saskatchewan, has very little in the way of affordable fresh produce and healthy food. As a family support and prevention worker, Rebecca has seen too many families struggling to eat well. It's a kind of scary situation to be in. If you can't afford the basic needs for your kids. You're living with that fear in your, in your heart that you're gonna lose your babies. Are you gonna live with this fear for the rest of your life? This is the spot. They used to have a store here. With the help of Crossroads, Rebecca's dream is to build a community food kitchen along with a garden and greenhouse that will enable local families to have a sustainable source of healthy food. I am working with a garden expert. Um, it'll be nice to get a lifted garden but we can grow potatoes, celery, peppers, eggplant, cucumbers, you name it, we can grow it. Our children, they're losing their language, they're losing their tradition. I wanna bring elders and children and people together where we can share stories. I just have a huge dream of what we can do in this kitchen. When I see a child struggling, I can see my own family and what I went through and there's no need for that when there's help out there. Rebecca knows all too well about struggling as a young mother. Her story almost had a tragic ending. I left home when I was 13 years old. I thought I was in love. I had my first hit, um, I got slapped. And then it started again. I got hit again over and over and over. I decided to leave him and I started drinking. Then I met another man and we became severe alcoholics. We lived in a tent for two years of my life. In this tent, I got beat up many times. I got hit with a shovel. I have a big scar on my head. I got shot at by a gun. When the abuse got so bad, Rebecca decided her life wasn't worth living. After a failed suicide attempt, Rebecca finally cried out to God. 
I fell down on my knees and I couldn't stop crying. And I said, God, please, I need you now. I know I've talked to you many times and I've promised you many times, but this time I need you. I just sat there for a while in the dark and looked at my daughter sleeping and I prayed even more. And then I felt a sense of relief, like, like I was tired. I never slept so good in a long time. Now sober for five years, Rebecca has found new freedom and strength to take on this big challenge that her community faces. With the help of Crossroads, Rebecca's dream can become a reality. I'm unstoppable, I feel. I feel like there's so many doors opening that it's hard to choose which one. And life at home is so wonderful. I can hear my kids laughing. I can actually taste the food. I can actually enjoy my beautiful parents. And life has changed and it's beautiful now. <laughs> how, how was your day? I can see Rebecca's dream coming because Rebecca doesn't stand alone, okay? That's one thing we always support her no matter what. And, um, and she knows that. I don't believe in don't. I don't believe in don't because I know there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. And all the praying that I'm doing, my knees are getting sore, so I hope we get this kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely love Rebecca's heart. And you see that all the time. People are changed, their lives are changed, and then they want to change others' lives. And I think, you know, it's been my dream for as long as I can remember, as we've looked at these issues in Canada, to work with people in the communities that are leaders themselves that want to make a difference. And I think that's the right way to do it. I know that God's heart right now for Canada is on this issue of healing Indigenous communities. We need you to join us to do that. We want to follow where we think that God is leading in this country, but we need your help. If if it is touching your heart, if you're like, yeah, you know what? I want to do something and I want to partner and I want to make a difference right on the ground, not going through big organizations or governments, but actually working through people with a heart to change their own communities. That's what we want to do. Do you want to join us? If you do, give us a call right now, 1-800-265-3100. You can also go online at crossroads.ca slash north. You know, your gift is going to help set up a food kitchen. It is the first of its kind in the remote area of Birch Narrows. It's going to empower the First Nations Dene community to become self-sustaining. Crystal Lavely has gone there. Crystal, you visited this very community. Thank you so much yes. for the work you're doing, by mm -hmm. the way. You know, it's it's extremely remote. I've been to many communities like this uh, in the Northwest Territories. Mm -hmm. Tell me some of the unique challenges that are facing this community. Well, Cheryl, just like Rebecca had said, there's a, there's a bunch of different factors. You've got a community that is seven hours away from the major city. So that makes it hard to buy food, nutritious food at an affordable price. Mm. So in, um, you know, Rebecca said it herself, when, when a community is low income and they're struggling to figure out if they should spend, you know, $5 on a couple bags of potato chips, which is gonna feed more mouths versus $5 on strawberries that won't last very long, then, then what do you do? You have to make a decision in that. And that's why they struggle with the high um, rate of diabetes. And she's just crying out for help. And that's why it's, it's so exciting that we get to ignite hope in her community for other people. So that's some of the challenges she's already said. I've been to those communities. I've, I cannot afford the food prices in those <laughs> communities. Talk about low income, like just as any, any Canadian, if they were to see like a jar of peanut butter for $50 or some of the crazy things that I've seen there, right. they'd be like, how do you live, right? So we want to make a difference. Right. Tell me about uh, what this community is going to do and what she's already done, because she's already started. Yes. So one thing about Rebecca that we love is that she is a leader. She has lived life, she's gone through trials, tests, and she is planted in Birch Narrows and she is committed to um, bringing this food kitchen to pass. And uh, she said she's already raised thousands of dollars to get the research going. So this isn't just some lady who has a wish and a hope and a prayer. This is a lady who has been doing the grunt work. Her and her father, they actually left the community of Birch Narrows for the first time she left her community, took a plane to Toronto to get education um, at Toronto to get um, all the moving parts and understanding the food kitchen and how it operates. Wow, that's amazing. That's how you met her. And you know, I've done this development work for a long time. I know the number one thing that matters is finding someone who understands the culture, who understands the community, 
community and is motivated, passionate, and driven. We have all of that in her. We just need to get behind her, Crystal. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Cheryl.